Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Journey with me as I go down various rabbit holes to explore the best Plan B options for you. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to the rabbit hole on the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones. And throughout my journey in finding a Plan B, I've gone down numerous rabbit holes to figure out which ones work for me. And since I've done some of this research already, I only think it's right to bring that information to fellow healthcare providers to help aid in your own search. As always, it's important for you, the listener, to do your own research and form your own opinions. Everyone's situation is unique, and a Plan B that works for one CRNA doesn't always work for another. Self-awareness is the key in any decision you make, since you must have an accurate grasp of your own strengths, weaknesses, and goals. With the start of the new year, I thought it would be nice to begin with, well, the beginning. I've looked at how to examine a particular Plan B in the past, so if you're looking for a refresher, you'll find that link in the show notes. However, I thought it would be nice to approach your research from a bit of a different angle. When I first got into investing, I was introduced to The Motley Fool. Many of you are familiar with them by now, but for those of you who aren't, here's the synopsis. David and Tom Gardner are two brothers who began investing in individual stocks at an early age. They have been major proponents of index fund investing over mutual fund investing, with an emphasis on investing in great companies. The brothers started their own investment newsletter in 1993 called The Motley Fool, named for an obscure quote in William Shakespeare's As You Like It. The idea is that fools and court jesters in Shakespeare's writings instructed as they amused, as they were often the only ones in the room who could speak truth to a king or queen without having their heads removed. The Motley Fool goal is to beat the stock market and show others how to do it. Since then, they found great success with many of their individual stock picks, particularly when they recommended buying a little-known small-cap company called Amazon in 1997. I was introduced to the newsletter and website in my early 20s, and I was hooked. No, I didn't subscribe to the stock picks until much, much later, and that was definitely my loss, but I took on the mantle of index fund investing, which served me very well for a time. More importantly, I purchased their investment guide, a book whose principles have echoed in my mind ever since. When David Gardner looks for what he describes as a rule breaker stock pick, he follows certain guidelines to make sure that a company is worth investing in. Today, I'd like to introduce you to some of those investing guidelines to show how I apply them to a broader range of Plan B opportunities. There are six guidelines to follow when looking at a Plan B through the Motley Fool lens. Number one, top dog and first mover in an important emerging industry. Companies like Amazon, Netflix, Starbucks, and Airbnb come to mind here. They are the innovators with the top market caps and the most sway in a given space. Most of these companies have done wonders for their shareholders over time. How does this apply to a potential plan B, though? Well, I tend to focus on the first mover bit here, specifically when thinking about creating your own business. If you're starting your own side business, are you moving early in a budding industry? Are you solving a problem or providing a value proposition that few others are? Let's look at network marketing, for instance. Now, you could go and become an Avon or Rodan and Fields consultant right now. I mean, they are top dogs in their industries after all. But if you yourself weren't an early mover within those companies, chances are your business could fall pretty flat. Why? Because you aren't a top dog or first mover within those particular companies. They already have thousands of consultants nationwide. Now, however, let's take a look at, let's say, Hue and Grace. Uh, they're a luxury self-care brand that focuses on hormone-safe skincare. They just had their official launch party last May. So you can still become a top dog and first mover in that emerging company. 
Same thing with Green Compass Global, the CBD company that just got started in the summer of 2020. Now, I also tend to think about uh, all of these folks that I've interviewed in the past year. Uh, Matt Vargo, he was one of the first to enter into the anesthesia app business, and now he owns several of the top selling medical apps. Jason Bolt was helping people on YouTube and Instagram before it was cool, and now he's an influencer. In short, if you are a first mover within your industry, you can often become a top dog too. Now, number two, sustainable advantage gained through business momentum, patent protection, visionary leadership, or inept competitors. Now, this is a big one, okay? You want to be a few years ahead of the curve, so you have to keep your eye to the future. Russ Malino invested in Qualcomm because he saw how far ahead of the competition they were with their technology and patents. Tesla and Amazon are companies that benefited from visionary leadership and overall business momentum. How can you tell a company has a sustainable advantage? Well, if they have strategic control over how they make money, then that is an advantage over competitors. Again, though, how does this apply to a plan B? Well, let's look at self-storage investing as an example. There are still a lack of high-quality operators out there, which means that there's less competition overall. Now, while barriers to entry are pretty low in the space, there's also a persistent lag in supply, meaning that there's still room to run in most markets, even if some of your competitors catch up a bit. Operators control how they make money through efficient operations and rental price increases. They also make money in up and down markets, making it attractive to own at any time. Another example is the senior living space. It takes strong leadership to carry out this type of business plan, as it requires both healthcare and real estate management skills. This is a high barrier to entry for most, meaning that capable operators have a distinct advantage. Coupled with the incoming silver tsunami, as baby boomers will generate more demand for assisted living than any previous generation, and you can see why senior living is an attractive investment space for at least the next decade or so. Now, moving on, number three. Strong past price appreciation. The easiest way to put this is that winners keep winning. If a particular company has great management and has outperformed expectations in the past, it's a decent bet that they will continue doing just that. The S&P 500 has returned 111% over the last five years, meaning that you doubled your money. And that's pretty good. Apple has returned 518%. And Microsoft has returned 449% in the same time frame. Neither of them were new companies five years ago, and both were already multi-baggers already by 2017. But hey, they just keep on killing it in their own industries. When thinking about your plan B, it's smart to take the same approach. It's easy to feel like you've missed the boat with certain investments. People have been saying that real estate can't get any more expensive, but it just keeps increasing in value. Why? There's limited inventory and more buyers than ever before. Until that changes, real estate investments should continue to perform well. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency as well. With Bitcoin priced around $50,000 right now, it's easy to think that you've missed your opportunity to buy in at a discount. But we're still witnessing the birth of a burgeoning technology. And Bitcoin is the undisputed king right now, having increased in value by about 700% in the last two years. Early investors in blockchain technology have seen truly astounding gains to this point, but that doesn't mean that there aren't more amazing games, gains to come for new investors. I mean, the overall market cap has roughly tripled in the last year alone, and adoption is still very early on. Moving on to number four, good management and smart backing. This is one of my key guidelines when I figure out what I want to do or actually invest in. You have to think about the people involved with your endeavor, specifically when thinking about overall operations. This applies to producing active and passive forms of income. If you are actively engaged with your business, you have to be honest with yourself. Are you capable of doing all the things needed to run a particular business, or do you need to adjust your expectations? Are you able to complete the tasks necessary, or do you need to outsource some of those? Options trading, for instance, requires you to sometimes make snap decisions during the daytime, which can be challenging if you're busy sedating patients in the OR. If you want to sell artwork, but you have five kids and a full-time job, how will you actually carve out the time to create what you want to sell? 
When it comes to passive income, the results that you often see depend on the quality of the management team involved with carrying out the business plan. Whether you're investing in apartment syndications, senior living facilities, or self-storage, you want a strong management team that can adjust as needed to the realities on the ground. I like to think of that farmer's insurance commercial line here. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Number five, strong consumer appeal to attract, to habituate, to profit, and to protect. Now, this really equates to building a strong brand that promotes consumer loyalty. Netflix essentially becomes a verb in our language because their brand is so strong. In the South, many people still ask for a Coke as opposed to asking for a soda. If a company doesn't have that strong of a brand recognition yet, you want to make sure that a plan is in place to actually develop it. This is particularly true when it comes to choosing companies to invest in or be a larger part of. When it comes to the MLM world, there are several companies that offer similar product lines. So how are they differentiating themselves from the crowd? What do they have that the other companies don't? How are they attracting and cultivating those repeat customers? The hemp and marijuana craze that's hitting America shows us products that already have an intrinsically habitual component to them. There are a ton of companies who are jockeying for position in this burgeoning marketplace. Which businesses will end up on top is anyone's guess, but there's no question that their consumers and customers will be raving fans of their products. If you're building your own company on the side, what are you doing to attract customers and produce your own raving fans? Thinking about this before you get started will put you that much farther ahead of the pack. Number six, being grossly overvalued by at least one constituent of the financial media. Notice that this says overvalued and not undervalued. It's not a bad thing for others to think that a company is overvalued. Amazon was considered by many analysts to be overvalued in 2012 at around $225 a share. Investors who bought in at that time have a 15-bagger on their hands, as the stock price now stands at around $3,400 a share. Investors may have been scared off for a time, but as Amazon successfully executed, many of those same skeptics converted and moved their money into the stock. For you, that means that you can potentially take advantage of lower prices and less competition in your particular side hustle. Real estate is one of those assets that regularly receives the overheated label. In 2014, the IMF warned that the global housing market was overheating, including in the U.S. At that time, the median U.S. home price was around $192,000. Now the median home price is over $342,000 for a 78% gain. And more people are buying into real estate than ever before. Cryptocurrency is another great example of this trend. Bitcoin was considered to be overvalued back in 2018 when its market cap was around $119 billion. Four years later, Bitcoin now has a market cap of around $900 billion and climbing. Over time, more and more folks are adopting cryptocurrency as part of their portfolios, and the entire market continues to explode. Now that we've gone through that foolish list, there are some other things that you should probably keep in mind when exploring a plan B. First off, you want to focus on more intermediate and long-term trends as opposed to just the short term. Don't fall prey to those get-rich-quick schemes out there, and make sure that you give yourself enough leeway to weather some storms along the way. Businesses that you believe in can lose value in the short term, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't keep at it. Don't let the media play with your short-term emotions and drive you out of markets and assets that make sense for the long term. That being said, you also can't be afraid to adapt to a changing world either. They say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Ignoring negative evidence as it piles up is a recipe for disaster. I personally try to make small tweaks along the way as opposed to making wholesale changes in my approach. And while I'm slower to change than some, it's important not to be too far on either side of that. Wild swings only bump up your blood pressure after all. Like I said at the beginning of the show, these six tenets have helped shape how I approach the opportunities that I come across in the investing world and beyond. But more importantly, perhaps, is knowing yourself first. Taking inventory of your strengths, weaknesses, and goals is essential to finding the plan B that's right for you. I hope that this episode will prove helpful in your journey moving forward.
Now, if you'd like to dive more into the overall Motley Fool investment philosophy, make sure you check out the Motley Fool Investment Guide. You can get the most recent edition anywhere that you buy books. You can also check out their website at www.fool.com or their real estate companion site at www.millionacres.com. I've also attached that original podcast on examining a plan B as well, so check out the show notes for that. And thank you for listening today. If you liked what you heard, make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss an episode. I'd also love to hear from you. If you have a question, comment, or rabbit hole topic that you'd like me to cover in an upcoming show, make sure you rate and review on your podcast player. I check those all the time, and I cover those questions in future episodes. If you'd like to connect with me or learn more about On Call Capital, make sure you find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or visit my website at www.oncallinvestments.com. Until next time, this is Bobby Jones signing off. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.